Forestry is New Zealand's third biggest export industry, behind dairy and red meat. There are 1.75 million hectares of plantations around the country, of which 90% are radiata pine. Forests planted on the east coast in the early 1990s are now being harvested, with volumes expected to grow by 50% in the next decade, creating opportunities for local communities and businesses. The Leeson Wood Council is an organisation of forestry companies, forest management companies, sawmills, the port, based here in Gisborne, just to give us a common voice in matters that we want to put forward. So often it's dealing with the councils, local government, promoting things and working together, you know, health and safety, other things, yeah, we have some focus groups, there's an environment group, a health and safety group, a training group. So it's trying to bring the companies to work together for a, a unified outcome. A few years ago we commissioned a report that showed that forestry and farming are the two big industries here in Gisborne and they sort of far outstrip anything else. So it is one of the drivers of this region. We've just had a report come out that said forestry nationally is 0.6% of GDP, but here in Gisborne it's actually 5.5%. So it actually stresses the importance of forestry to the Gisborne region. The employment rate in forestry and downstream was something like 7% of the people here. And then you've still got all the support industries, the mechanics, the accountants, the trainers, everything like that. So we figure that you know, maybe one in four households actually has an income coming from forestry in it. The first plantings were back in the early 60s, mainly for soil conservation. So a lot of those forests have now been harvested and replanted. And then the next really big wave was in the early 90s. And that was with a lot of investment blocks coming on. So that's now 25 years ago. So those are just starting to come up to harvest. So we're now seeing much greater volumes come out of the region. So a few years ago it might have been a million tonnes per year was being harvested, now it's up two, two and a half, and that could go as high as four. It puts a lot of pressure on everything, from the whole lot is finding enough guys out there to work in the forest, enough trucks, and then we actually don't have much processing here in Gisborne, so the port actually is a bottleneck. It's just built and built over the last ten years. Back then it was doing 500, 600,000 tonnes. It's now doing well over 2 million tonnes a year. It's had to improve. You know, all the operations are, and it's a lot slicker now than it was back then. It's, it's just had to develop. There's a lot of challenges keeping ships turning around at the port. It's a single berth port, so you can only have one ship in at a time. So that constrains you to how much you can actually load out eventually. It's a port that's in the middle of town, so there's not that much storage space, and it's tacked on the side of the hill. So the idea has actually been to get ships in as quick as possible, load them up and move them out. Labour is a big one. Forestry is actually quite a skilled job these days. It's no longer give a guy a spade and tell him to go and plant a few trees. It's got a lot more technical. We've now got machines out there. A lot of those guys are driving million dollar machinery, so you can't just grab someone off the street. They need to be well trained and onto it. Health and safety has always been a big focus for the industry. And that goes back to day one. We've seen that we need to make a number of changes. One of the big ones coming through is actually more mechanisation. So we do have a, a future forest research harvesting team. One of the big key things is that no, no hand on the saw, no man on the hill. So it's trying to get the guys out of the chainsaws and into driving machines. They're in a protected cab. And then even better, actually teleoperate that from up the hill so they're not even down the hill. So that's been going along. That's starting to have get into production now or prototypes are out there. In terms of 2013, there was a, was a terrible year for forestry with a number of deaths and the industry's had to take a hard look at itself, which it has, it commissioned an independent forestry safety review. So there was three independent people who came through, reviewed everything and they made a number of recommendations. One of the biggest ones has then led to the setting up of the Forest Industry Safety Council. So that was a joint council and it's got industry on it, it's got work safe, it's got the training organisations on it, and that's trying to put out a consistent approach. We're actually seeing real gains, real drops in the serious harm rates over the last few years. I've been logging for my lifetime. 42 years I've been in the industry since I've left school. We've diversified into two logging crews. We've got two swing yarders and two processes before we were just putting too much wood through one gate and for safety reasons we've now segregated and gone to two different, two separate uh, logging identities. We run the two swing yarders with grappling all the time or 95% of the time we grapple with them. 
They've just been updated with cameras on the uh, haulers so that we don't need the breaker outs. We also run a fallow buncher to get any flat land that we can get or where we can help the fallers out. We also run a large six-wheel drive skidder and that just helps us top up our production when we needed one. There's only a few of us old guys in this team. Most of them are between 18 and 30 years of age. The young guys, as soon as we give them a wee bit of grounding, we're giving them the carrot, which is an opportunity to drive these new machines. These new machines are all air-conditioned seats, radios, jukeboxes, just exactly what they love. It's always health and safety, very paramount on that. The public perception of the industry's not very good. Um, our track record earlier on wasn't very good, but going forward with the technology, I would like to see a lot more of our school kids and give them the opportunity to come out here, see what the way we're running with technology, and I think they would totally change. The industry's got a lot of money to offer. I know that is not the way to be looking at it, but it is a good career for the right people. My son is 18, he's following my footsteps out of uh, one of the colleges here in Gisborne. Out of 60 odd students, there was only two that were gonna go into the forestry, and yet some of the other kids didn't know which way they were going, and I'm, why? Why give us a chance, give us the opportunity to, to show what we can do and sit in a machine. The guys physically only work barely seven hours a day. Um, we do start early because we want to get on the ball, but we're, we're away from here um, early in the afternoon. And again, we only do five days a week. If we have a wet day during the week, we just knock off and go home. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.